Can we calculate an intrinsic value for Bitcoin? Could the hype be for real? And are we missing out on this? Or has the boat already sailed? Bitcoin is a controversial topic to say the least, with a huge variety of opinion. One of the most canny investors around, Warren Buffett, famously described it as rat poison squared. While some are adamant that it's the future of money, skeptics argue that it has no intrinsic value because unlike traditional assets, it doesn't produce earnings or have any tangible backing. It's the fact that Bitcoin sits in this murky twilight zone that makes it so volatile. It's volatile because people genuinely don't know if we are fools for not buying enough of it now before it becomes unaffordable or whether we will be fools for buying it because it's just going to crash to zero once someone pulls the rug out from under our feet. And yet, as a quick look at Yahoo Finance headlines will tell us, the reality is that people are putting their money into this and it is increasingly being taken seriously by institutions. So let's look at Bitcoin and figure out how we might try to use mathematics to understand its intrinsic price. But what if commentators are looking at Bitcoin's value the wrong way? While Bitcoin may not have factories or dividends, it does have something that seems to me to have value, and that is a collection of people who use it to transfer wealth. When you think of it that way, it seems a bit ridiculous to say it has no value. For example, it is a means to transfer wealth across international boundaries without the usual restrictions. Now, whether that's a good or bad thing, that can be argued. But the fact is that this is one real benefit of it. If that's the case, then what is its value? Surely this must be in its network of people. The millions of users, miners, developers and transactions all contribute to something greater than the sum of its parts. And it turns out that there is a mathematical formula for estimating the value of networks. It's called Metcalfe's Law. And over the last few years, it has been gaining interest as a means to help understand how to value Bitcoin. In this video, we're going to discuss this idea and explore whether it can help gain insights into Bitcoin's price beyond the hype, speculation and naysayers. Before we jump into this, I really should make it clear to everyone that while Metcalfe's Law is a useful theory, it's just theoretical and may or may not provide insight into valuations of cryptocurrencies. Metcalfe's Law is a way to quantify the value of networks. To be clear on this, we are talking about the value of the connections, not the hardware that enables this. Metcalfe's law states that a network's value is proportional to the square of its users. A network with two users has just one possible connection, but a network with five users has 10 possible connections, and a network with 10 users has 45 possible connections. Metcalfe's law is grounded in simple mathematics. A network with n nodes can form n times n minus 1 over 2 connections. For large values of n, this approximates to the value being proportional to n squared, where v is the value of the network. Note that this really means usefulness of the network, not literally price. But it's reasonable to assume that the price should be in some sort of proportion to the usefulness of the asset. However, not all connections are equally valuable. Some relationships like close friends on social media matter more than others. This limitation of this model has led to some refinements, such as using Ziff's law, which accounts for diminishing returns as a network grows. Ziff's law is an empirical observation often used to describe the distribution of ranks and values in various systems, such as word frequencies and languages, city populations or network connections. The law states that the frequency of an item is inversely proportional to its rank, like in this equation where F is the frequency of the value and R is the ranked item. And here, alpha is a positive constant, typically close to 1 for many systems. Zipf's law is not derived from first principles, but we can understand it as the result of power law distributions and probability principles. We've discussed power laws and their connection to complexity theory in my last video. So this is a real example of how power laws can be useful for making calculations. 
Sif's law suggests that the most valuable connections dominate, or the majority have lower value. We can refine Metcalfe's law using this insight. The derivation of this is a bit more complex, but the adjustment modifies Metcalfe's law to this equation. Applying Metcalfe's law to Bitcoin involves linking its value to the number of active users. However, it's difficult to obtain good reliable data on this, so I'm just going to use figures quoted on Wikipedia's page about Bitcoin. According to Wikipedia, in 2017 there were between 2.9 and 5.8 million unique users using a cryptocurrency wallet, driving its price into quite a wide range of values from around 5,000 to 20,000. In 2023, estimates suggest around 80 million users, and the price reached into the 30 to $70,000 range. Just for simplicity, let's just generate two data points from representative values for these ranges. We can try to fit both Metcalfe's law and the ZIF modification to Metcalfe's law to these two data points. However, to tell what type of curve fits best, we really need three data points. But we can find a third if we use the origin as another point, which is just zero, zero. This makes sense as presumably the value of Bitcoin with no or very few users is practically zero compared to what it is today. In order to fit these two functions using a simple approach, we still need to determine a scaling constant for each function, A and B. Picking suitable values for these constants allows us to make this plot which I've done by eye to make a plausible fit rather than a strict best fit to these few points on the assumption that if this theory is correct, then this curve should have a positive slope. This chart seems to provide some evidence for the idea that Bitcoin's price is driven by the number of users consistent with our theory. We can see already that the zip modification is a better fit to this data though rarely there are too few data points and too much uncertainty to be sure about this. Indeed, potentially the utility of additional users may be slowing faster than expected according to Zip's model due to diminishing returns. So potentially, a significant driver of Bitcoin's value might be expected to be user growth. Future price increases may follow a Zip-like model, in which case if Bitcoin's user base doubled from, say, 80 million to 160 million, its price might also be expected to roughly double according to this model. But what if growth followed a curve closer to the original Metcalf model instead? I think this seems unlikely, as in future, diminishing returns per user seems like a more likely scenario. We might consider an alternative curve where the added value from additional users diminishes even more rapidly than the ZIF modification. This creates a bit of a range of expectations as to potential future price. But what is happening with the number of Bitcoin users? Well, it appears there are competing forces here. Cryptocurrencies seem to be getting some high-level backing from President Trump and Elon Musk. But at the same time, Bitcoin is facing increasing competition from other cryptocurrencies, meaning that there are forces potentially pushing its user base both higher and lower. So what do I think about this model? While Metcalfe's law does provide an interesting lens at which to look at this problem, it strikes me it's still a long way from being a crystal ball. While it's tempting to think that this model describes Bitcoin's value, it's unclear how much the price has been inflated in the past due to speculation and whether this network really deserves the value it's been given. Nonetheless, I think that number of Bitcoin users does appear to be important in explaining the price of Bitcoin, but it is difficult to say how well this is explained by Metcalfe's law. But there are huge uncertainties here, particularly around user numbers and also due to price volatility. I would also suggest that such a relationship might equally be explained by models of price versus supply. So can we calculate an intrinsic value for Bitcoin? Perhaps not in the traditional sense, but through the lens of Metcalfe's and Ziff's frameworks, we can see that Bitcoin's price may have been driven as much by sustained user adoption as it has been by speculative hype. 
which I think is quite an interesting observation given the discussions around Bitcoin's value. The key thing is, while people are using this technology, it will have value. With about 1% of the current population of the world using it, if it were to become much more widely used over the next few years, say rising up to a level of 5 to 10% adoption, then there is certainly a lot of potential for its price to go up further. However, it's really important to take that with a grain of salt, bearing in mind that Bitcoin's future remains uncertain and, like all new technologies, faces threats from emerging rivals and regulatory shifts. My main concern would be a scenario where, for example, a powerful group with the ability to make crypto coin much more mainstream decides to start its own cryptocurrency, and this ultimately replaces Bitcoin. If users start rapidly abandoning Bitcoin, we might expect a sharp decline in its value. Once upon a time, nearly everyone owned a VHS video recorder. Now, that technology has become effectively obsolete. Nonetheless, with so many users, it, it does seem much less likely that it could just crash to zero as quickly as someone like Warren Buffett appears to believe. But Bitcoin is inherently speculative, which I think its price volatility shows. In my opinion, it's the sort of investment you should only make if you can afford to lose the money or be prepared to have it in an asset during some rough rides.